Since taking over as owner of Chelsea in 2022, Todd Bowley has gone from a relatively unknown billionaire to now being relentlessly targeted and critiqued by the media and laughed at by the public. But I think he's been profiled unfairly. Instead of being the stupid, naive and arrogant owner he's made out to be, I think he's one of the smartest, ambitious and innovative owners in world football. That might surprise you, so let me explain. We hear so much about Bowley now as Chelsea owner, but who really is he? Bowley was raised in Bethesda, Maryland, where he graduated from London School in 1991. He earned a Bachelor of Business Business Administration in Finance from the College of William and Mary in 1996, the second oldest university in the US after Harvard. He had a really good education, and whilst not being the best student at school, he's incredibly smart. He wanted to get into finance, so following advice from his former geometry teacher at London School, he applied for an internship in the UK, leading to the opportunity to work for Citibank in London, whilst also studying at the London School of Economics. This entire experience kickstarted his affection for England, and more notably, London. Bowley's career took him from CS First Boston in New York, now known as Credit Suisse, to J.H. Whitney & Co, where he learned about valuing businesses and using debt, and onto Guggenheim Partners, where he served as president. Remarkably, this all happened in the space of five years. Bowley had enjoyed a rapid rise, and it didn't end there. In 2015, he set up a company called Eldridge Industries, a holding company that owns stakes in 80 different finance, media, sports, real estate, and tech companies. Some of his acquisitions now include the world-famous Golden Globes and the ever-growing A24 films, which is behind some of the biggest movies movies of the last decade. Despite making most of his wealth through Eldridge, by the time he went to set up the company, he was already co-owner of the LA Dodgers, who under his co-ownership have enjoyed a revival in the MLB. In fact, the first investment Eldridge ever made was in replay technologies. It involved putting nine cameras around the home plate in the Dodgers stadium to give viewers a 360 degree replay. Bowley's company sold that to Intel, and it's now used by all the US sports in their broadcasts. His sporting ventures don't end with baseball. In 2021, he acquired a 27% stake in the LA Lakers. As of 2021, the Lakers were the third highest valued team in the NBA. All of this accumulates to build not only an extremely secure financial position for Bowley, but also an impressive showing of consistent, high-level performance. In whatever he's done, he hasn't failed. But the same can't be said when it comes to his early days as Chelsea owner. Following the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, Roman Abramovich was exiled from mainland Europe and his assets were frozen. This meant Chelsea had to be sold. On the 30th of May 2022, a consortium led by Todd Bowley and Clear Lake Capital announced the completion of the takeover of Chelsea Football Club. Clear Lake Capital, an investment firm which is thought to manage assets worth around £45 billion, provide the majority of the funds, with Bowley actually holding a minority stake that acts as the face of the board. The club was bought for £2.5 billion and a further £1.75 billion was placed to invest in the club. Bowley had always wanted to own a football team. Football's the biggest sport in the world. The passion that the fans have for the activity and the sport and the teams is unparalleled. In fact, this wasn't the first time Bowley had tried to buy Chelsea, as in 2019, he saw an offer of £2.2 billion rejected by Abramovich, and he also had a previous interest in purchasing Spurs. Clearly, a Premier League team in London was always a target of his. Before I show you why I think Bowley might be a genius, we need to examine why he's viewed so negatively. As I've explained, Bowley isn't a man who's been conditioned by failure, he's pretty much only known success. That's why his first nightmare year in charge of Chelsea was probably a huge shock for him and those who'd worked with him previously. I say nightmare because the 2022-23 season, Bowley's first as owner, was Chelsea's worst since the Premier League began. After only seven games into the season, Thomas Tuchel, the man who the ownership inherited as manager, the man who'd won Chelsea its second Champions League, was sacked. The consortium had only been in charge for exactly 100 days and had just spent £255.3 million on the transfer window that shut only six days before the sacking, a transfer window that Tuchel was heavily relied upon when informing the ownership of who to sign and sell. Todd Bowley and his consortium were meant to be different, but this felt very much like the Chelsea of old. Graham Potter, who had a remarkable rise from the ninth tier of English football to taking Brighton to their best ever league finish at the time, was hired as Tuchel's replacement, costing Chelsea £21.5 million to bring him and his staff to the capital. The fans who adored Tuchel never really warmed to Potter. Chelsea have a history of managers who have huge personalities and whilst Potter is clearly a good coach, he didn't have the persona required to survive long-term at Chelsea. I say long-term because he was handed a five-year deal. He saw out only seven months of it before he was replaced by interim manager Frank Lampard. Todd Bowley, who when he took over as Chelsea owner, named himself interim sporting director as the club were yet to find suitable candidates for the role, came under huge criticism by the English media, Chelsea fans and football fans in general, following their 2022 summer transfer business. At the time, the recruitment structure hadn't been finalised, so it left Bowley having to 
execute the transfer dealings himself. This is a man who was extremely new to football and whose knowledge of the game at the time was average at best. Here's who Chelsea signed. Other than Wesley Fofana despite his injuries, Carney Chukwemeka and Gabriel Slalina, they were all poor signings. And only 12 months later, two of them have already been sold. This is the very important backdrop that sat behind Bowley during his first year in charge. Whilst this was going on, Bowley made the headlines numerous times for things he said at public appearances. After only four months as the Chelsea owner and after just sacking Tuchel, in an interview with Salt, Bowley suggested a North versus South All-Star game. You know, you think you can do a North versus South, you know, All-Star game for Premier League and fund whatever the pyramid needed very easily. Many saw this as an American coming over to the English game and trying to Americanize a league that so many already feel is perfect. This comment made him a threat and this comment echoed throughout the world. Instantly, Bowley, the media and the public were off on the wrong foot. This continued throughout the season and it escalated following comments made before Chelsea's Champions League quarter-final clash against Real Madrid. This was Chelsea's last chance of making something out of an awful season. Before the first leg at the Bernabeu, on his way to the game, Bowley predicted a 3-0 win for Chelsea. I say have a lot of faith and we're going to win 3-0 tonight. A game in which they ended up losing 2-0. This again was swarmed on by the media. Additionally, in between Chelsea's two-legged quarter-final with Real Madrid, they lost 2-1 to Brighton at Stamford Bridge, leading to Bowley, who comes to the changing room every game, having a full-on rant to the players in an attempt to rouse the squad before the second leg against Madrid. One senior player, who'd been signed for a large fee by Bowley, was singled out for heavy criticism, leaving them disillusioned. Despite this coming from a good place, as he was hoping it would motivate the players, again, this was everywhere across the media the next day and a swarm of negativity came with it. Much has also been made of Bowley and his consortium replacing many of Chelsea's stalwarts behind the scenes that had been present during Abramovich's period as owner. Gary Neville, who's been extremely vocal about Bowley, and not in a positive way, blamed him for the poor 2022-23 season following a 3-1 loss to Arsenal at the Emirates. He's come in and he needed somehow to try and keep the footballing department together. When you start sacking groundsmen, physios, sporting directors, managers, everybody, you're sacking everybody. Almost created a different club. You're throwing everybody under a bus and saying it's all their fault and not mine. I've inherited a, a mess but the problem is we all know that Chelsea wasn't a mess. Chelsea was a very successful club with people who ran it very well for a long time. This is Bowley created. I think the final reason why Bowley is viewed in a negative light is down to the fact he's Chelsea's owner. Arguably Chelsea are the least liked club in the Premier League mainly because they are seen as the club that started to spend significant fees on transfers under Abramovich. Whilst Chelsea certainly hyperinflated the market I believe that's always been a harsh assessment of the club. I think the money we see today on transfers was always going to happen, with Abramovich or not. Nevertheless, my opinion is the minority, with the sentence Chelsea ruined football pretty much the consensus among football fans. If he owned another club, let's say Spurs, as he was interested in them, I don't think he would get half the negativity he's received. With all that evidence, it's clear why the media and the public view Bowley as the opposite of a genius. So how on earth can I think he is one? Well, Here's my defence of Todd Bowley. The terrible 2022-23 campaign for Chelsea wasn't solely Bowley's fault. Chelsea weren't in a great place when the consortium bought the club. Admittedly, in the 12 months previous, Chelsea had won the Champions League, Super Cup and the Club World Cup. However, Chelsea hadn't challenged for a league title since 2016-17 when they had won the league under Conte. The 2021 Champions League success had papered over the cracks in a squad and club that felt like it was at the end of a cycle. Since the club's last league title, it did start to feel like the enthusiasm Abramovich had walked into Chelsea Chelsea with in 2003 had started to fade. Yes, since that league title, Chelsea had spent 879.5 million euros, but it felt like the momentum that delivered Chelsea so much success wasn't there anymore. A season like 2022-23 felt like it had been coming. Interestingly, Chelsea had been known to have seasons where things start to unravel. We all remember how after winning the league the previous season under Mourinho, Chelsea finished 10th in 2015-16. However, the squad that won the league the previous year was largely still intact, meaning it wasn't surprising to see them lift the league title the next season. In 2022, things felt different. A lot of key players were out of contract or running into their last year. It did feel like the squad needed a refresh. The recruitment under Abramovich in his last seasons as owner was incredibly poor, especially considering the amount of money they spent. This all led to Todd Bowley and his consortium taking the reins of a club on the brink of chaos. There's no doubt that the failures of the 2022-23 season were enhanced by Bowley and the consortium's poor decision making, especially in the summer transfer window. However, one decision which I still feel is the right one is when the club sacked Thomas 
Thomas Tuchel. Alignment between the manager and those that run the club is arguably the most important factor for success. If you look at Pep at City, Klopp at Liverpool or Arteta at Arsenal, it's clear that the manager and the club are all pushing in the same direction. It's well documented how Tuchel wasn't keen to collaborate. He had his agent fill in on his behalf at recruitment meetings. Of course he's a world-class coach, there's no denying it, but I feel the backlash that came Boley's way for this decision is incredibly unfair. I fully agree that the decision to hire Potter as Tuchel's replacement was the wrong one, especially with how much he cost to bring in. The ownership clearly felt he could replicate what he did at Brighton at Chelsea, but I think anyone with half a clue about football could tell it was never going to work out. However, Bowley and the consortium's poor recruitment in 2022 of both players and manager can be defended. At the time, Bowley hadn't been able to bring in and implement a recruitment team, something which he has now remedied. This is due to the takeover only being completed two months before the season began. The amount of planning and strategy that goes into a new season is incomprehensible, let alone planning a new project and club. You might argue, why hadn't this been figured out pre-takeover? Well, as I've mentioned, this whole process was done incredibly quickly. No one was expecting Putin to invade Ukraine and for the domino effect after. Bowley and his consortium took over Chelsea 11 days before the transfer window opened. That's exactly why it was such a poor window. Bowley had to take care of the recruitment. It was either rush the process of building a recruitment team or rush one transfer window. The effects of rushing the formation of a recruitment team has far wider consequences than rushing one window. That, mixed with the fact he inherited a manager who wasn't collaborating, was why the first transfer window was so poor. I think Bowley was brave and noble to take full responsibility of executing Chelsea's transfers, not arrogant and naive. The decision he and the consortium took here, I think has been and will be repaid. Chelsea's transfer business since co-sporting directors Paul Wynn Stanley and Lawrence Stewart, as well as the co-director of recruitment and talent Joe Shields have been hired, I think has been great. Everyone will focus on the money spent in January 2023 and then finishing 12th that same season. However, it's not as simple as that. The money spent that winter was unprecedented, but the plan was never for those players to turn around that season. It was done to exploit a loophole that had been spotted surrounding amortisation. Every player signed in that window was put on a six-year deal or more, meaning in terms of FFP, the cost would be spread over six years plus, instead of the traditional five years. This exploit has now been patched by UEFA, so that just shows how clever it was. The swarm of negativity that came from this was mainly because it was so unordinary. People just weren't familiar with it. However, looking forward, Chelsea have recruited some of the best young talent in the world in each position, as well as not having to pay the headline fee in a more condensed period of time. I think Bowley, the consortium and the recruitment team will have the last laugh. Gary Neville condemned Bowley for removing Marina Granovskaya and Petr Cech from their roles, but he clearly hasn't researched why this happened. Petr Cech's departure came despite efforts from Bowley to keep him. With Granovskaya, Bowley had to remove her. Abramovich, who as I've previously mentioned had been exiled from Europe for his close ties with Putin, was a good friend of Granovskaya. She essentially was trusted by him to run the club. So just to be clear, Neville was critical of Bowley for removing a close friend of the shamed Roman Abramovich. What a weird thing to criticise him for. If he had kept her, imagine the uproar from the media and the public. He was damned if he did and damned if he didn't. In fairness, I think the consortium have gone too far with sacking groundsmen and medical staff, but these are people that leave no stone unturned when it comes to their pursuit of success. You almost have to respect the level of depth they've gone to in a bid to rectify Chelsea's fortunes. I get how it looks from the outside. An American comes to Chelsea, guts the club of the people that made it successful in the first place, and then Chelsea have their worst ever season. However, those that have commented on this situation, like Gary Neville, shouldn't be speaking from the outside, especially when key information is so simple to find, which lifts the lid on why this was done. I think it's also important to understand Bowley's intentions. The comments made about a North vs South All-Star game, I think were innocent. As I've shown with his career, this is a man who likes to innovate and try things. The whole hysteria surrounding Bowley's suggestion was blown out of proportion. This was an interview where he was essentially spitballing. He never said he was going to push for it. It was just something he'd been thinking about. Additionally, Bowley wanted the revenue from this game to go towards the pyramid, not his pocket. He essentially got completely hammered for proposing charity to clubs that need the money. I do understand why this left a bitter taste in a lot of people's mouths. It was unwise within a couple of months of owning Chelsea to probably talk about this concept, but the uproar wasn't necessary. I also believe his intentions for Chelsea are pure. Not only have Bowley and the consortium agreed to clauses that bar the sale of any of Chelsea's shares for 10 years, but they're also accelerating the process to redevelop Stamford Bridge, which will not only add value for the match-going fan, but also Chelsea's stature as a club. These two factors mixed with the pledge to invest £1.75 billion pounds shows they're in this for the long haul. The project is growing day by day. After acquiring French league girl club RC Strasbourg for £65 million, pounds, Chelsea have started their multi-club model. The plan is for RC Strasbourg to receive players on loan from Chelsea or buy players outright from other clubs, who can not only help them climb Ligue 1, but also be sold at a later date to Chelsea or another club. He always refers to how the fans, fans the centre. And quotes like this aren't meaningless either. Lord Daniel Finkenstein and Barbara Sharon are lifelong Chelsea fans, and they were explicitly added to the board as they would provide a fan's perspective when decisions needed to be made.
made. Bowley's also conscious of the mistakes he made during his first year as owner, and I don't see a scenario where he'll go into the Chelsea changing room and try and galvanise them again. Hence why he's now stepped back, leaving the team and structure he's implemented to do their jobs. Overall, I think the media and the majority of the public have got Todd Bowley wrong, perhaps labelling him a genius as too strong. But I think he's closer to that description than people think. Time will be the judge on whether I'm right, but don't be surprised if you see Chelsea under Todd Bowley return to where they have been over the last 20 years.